Hi everybody, we are back, it's another Wednesday, and you know what that means. You're here for another Shiny Developer Series live stream, of course. <laughs> well, my name is Eric, and if it's your first time here, uh, welcome. And what we'll be doing tonight is getting back to some fun uh, Shiny projects that um, have been inspired by other uh, streamers and our uh, little community out there with R and data science streamers and I've got a few uh, maybe mini stories slash rants to share about some stuff and I've also learned about a new package that might directly help with um, creating the infrastructure for this uh, learning project and this was I started this about a month month and a half ago maybe even longer time is very really flying when uh, Jesse Mostapak, who um, is just, uh, I think, starting to settle down in her new uh, digs in Chicago, um, had started this nice tutorial kind of set of tweets about building shiny apps. And I thought, well, what if we took this in another kind of accompanying direction where we build infrastructure that shows somebody's kind of building progression of starting from a prototype application all the way to having it polished up but having like kind of the tweets that she would have or anybody would do and kind of showing the development process of that correspond to actual apps all in one major app so this is going to encompass a couple of packages that I've been playing with lately um, one called brochure which I'll get to in a little bit and another one potentially that may serve as a nice GUI interface to create apps that I just learned about last week at the R and Pharma conference. So that's where we're at. I'm sure there's gonna be some fun development uh, mishaps and learnings along the way, because as usual, it's never, never a dull moment in my streams. Let's say hello to our friendly chat here. We've got Unicorn Coder, hello, welcome back. And welcome, Jeremy Data, your first time tuning in live. Um, hopefully you, you'll like what you see or hear. And welcome, uh, first time, looks like a first time viewer, HK981, hello. Daniel, welcome. And David, yeah, you're here too, great, great to see you. Now, Daniel, um, I don't know, are you, are you okay with me sharing your big news that I just heard about today? Because I'm very excited for you, uh, nonetheless. Um, let me know. I always like to run it by people first. If you're on the Discord of our streamer Discord, you'll, you may have seen it in one of the channels. Um, oh, okay. Okay, well, okay, well, okay, well, um, Daniel apparently has an offer to join, uh, a university, a very, uh, very influential university, uh, UBC up in Canada. So... We'll see. Um, obviously, you haven't accepted it just yet, but I know you've been hard at work in some interviews, <laughs> putting you through the ringer. It sounds like so. Hopefully, this will this will be be a thing soon, whether it's there or somewhere else. So, congrats on at least getting the offer. I know how major amount of work you've been putting into that, and yeah, congrats again. So, okay. Um, any other housekeeping to share? Oh, well, about the OBS setup. Um, some of you may have heard in a previous stream how I lost one of my favorite tricks in my uh, setup here. Well, I got it back because, as usual, I'm able to uh, track down with a little Linux hackery um, little ways of enhancing the NVIDIA driver, and I took it in my own under my own uh, shop, so to speak, to, to configure that. I may go ahead and start sharing some of that, actually. So let's move on here. Yep, the third window, as Unicorn Coder correctly remembers. Um, let me bring it in. Here we are, here's our third window. So for those that aren't aware, I have a patched NVIDIA driver that lets me basically have a third monitor without it looking like a third monitor. Um, takes a little getting used to though. So I gotta resize things a little bit here. Yep, 
Yeah, it's not quite perfect yet, but I'm working on it. Someday I'll be more fluid with this. Shrink it down a bit. Because this fix, to make all this work, I was uh, very intimidated about. But I ended up uh, getting it to work. So let me um, show you what the heck I'm talking about as we do a little housekeeping out of the way. Oh, that needs a dark mode, doesn't it? There we go. All right. Let's see. I've been assembling, assembling the... Uh, the bookmarks for today. All right, let's see here. So this is really applying just to those that are running Linux. Um, this is a bash, a set of bash scripts in essence that patch the driver. Or if you have a certain NVIDIA card, you know, unlock a certain feature to um, to uh, bring in the ability to have like a third display without, or another display no matter how many you have without actually um, having a hardware device for it. Well, it stopped working about a week and a half ago and I wasn't the only one. There were other ones that said, hey, this new driver update, it's not supported. And I chimed in here thinking, okay, well, I'll at least give them my hardware specs and see about you know, getting some more information. Well, then I saw another post that walked through how to do this yourself. <laughs> and good news, I, I actually did it. It ended up being a very trivial thing of basically copying and pasting a couple lines and some bash scripts to match my driver version. And lo and behold, I ran it and it didn't blow up and I got my feature back. So. The first time I've ever hacked on a video display driver, and it may be the last, but you know, I didn't blow things up. So that's why the third monitor is working again. Okay, enough about that uh, crazy stuff. Let's go ahead and get into our development task at hand. Get to good old VS Code here. It's on my other screen, I gotta move it over. All right. So if you are, if you're also new here, you may notice um, not that I have anything against our studio at all, um, as far as the IDE is concerned, but I am expanding my horizons a bit with VS Code with the R extension because I've had some situations late lately where I've interact, I've brought in other tooling with my shiny development or package development. And VS Code lets me kind of toggle between different frameworks really easily. Remember, it's Python, Docker, databases, stuff. They all sorts of tricks I'm doing these days. Let's zoom in on this too. I realize I did not do that yet. I think that should be good. If not, uh, please let me know if that's too small. But what we're going to work on today is continuing our... Um, Oh wow, this linter is really getting getting uh, picky on me. I just added some new extensions and they're apparently uh, going to flag me when I have trailing white space or something. So <laughs> clean that up. So let's run this first so it'll probably make more sense. Um, let's go ahead and select all of this. Run it. What? No package called Markdown? Wow. Okay, that's what I get for updating a container. Uh, just before I hit the the uh, magical play button on my stream, let's fix that real quick. First, let me resize this a little bit. I hope I don't have to rebuild the darn container. <laughs> I promised people there wouldn't be Docker debugging tonight. <laughs> I promised them. Let me zoom in one more time just in case. All right, that should be better. Okay, let's go to our terminal here. What did I do wrong? Okay. Now this one's not using RM, so I gotta be a little 
careful here. Um, because I have to run this as root, basically. So, all right, running on. Okay, good. I have to update my Docker file for this one. But mark down in here. Hopefully this works. Good, good, good. Okay, all right. We will get out of this. We will relaunch it and get back in business here. Okay. Let's try this again. There we go. We're we're back in order. So what the what the goal of this whole thing is is that you see I have in essence what looks like one shiny app running on here. You can see it's very basic. There's no styling on this whatsoever, except for um, a fancy data table with DT and a ggplot. Nothing, nothing crazy here. But notice the two links here at the top. This home link, this page two link. The, these are actually separate Shiny app processes, but they're in a single app. So here, I clicked it, and I just kind of in the hypothetical situation that I went from that first app and I did a little work to make it more fun or more easy to use. Now I got the select input here to select things. That's not doing anything. But you can see I got different plots and different tables. So the idea is that with the brochure package, we have a way to put all these little mini learning apps inside a single app. Can I say app more often? Probably, probably could. Um, so there's a couple easier things, I hope they're easy, that I wanna do tonight. Is first, I don't like just the typical kind of list item HTML style here. What I want for this is to be a navigation bar at the top so that it looks more clean, a little more uh, native shiny looking with the bootstrap styling. I want to get that there. And then second, I want to try out another package that I just learned about um, last week to see if maybe I can learn from how they bootstrap Golem apps um, from uh, that, that new package, Truler. Uh, who knows if I'm saying it right. We'll get to that later. First, we're going to try the, e hopefully the easier wins first, um, which is the styling of these um, navigation bars. So. As always, we got a friendly group here, so if you haven't said hello, please say hi, and, and I'm, all, I'm looking at it with questions. If you have any, I'll be glad to answer them, and hopefully this goes smoothly to some stuff at work this morning, because apparently my computer lost all authentication access to basically every Microsoft service that we have, like the email, the Teams chat, the who knows what else. And so I had to call IT be like, well, I can't log into anything. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Luckily that it somehow got fixed, but I lost like a good two or three hours um, today with that nonsense. But when everything's local, I have everything under my control. All right. So going through this uh, app.r file in terms of the structure of this, for instance, build the process. Um, we won't worry about that. So here I have separate scripts for each of those individual apps that we have here. Um, but what brochure does is gonna, it's gonna take these links that we have. You saw that little itemized list with the tags LI. And then it's going to make sure that when we, um, when we visit those respective pages, it will actually um, browse to those apps. So it's got the little um, ta HTML tags action going on here with the UL and LI items. And then we put that in a div with more, uh, or is this what, oh, this is what I was trying to do and it didn't work, okay. Yeah, so we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, So each page of the app has its own function. And by the way, I'm reading through this, not just for those that are new. This is literally for me too, because I haven't looked at this in a month and a half. 
and our pharma literally took a lot of my brain cells of my previous projects away and I gotta get them all back. So, so we got functions for each of the pages, which are basically separate apps. They each have the href, which is kind of like the, the after the trailing slash on the browser them, and then we wrap it in brochure. Okay, so it's so the abstractions I did a month and a half ago make for a pretty clean interface here. Um, good grief. This is... Oh, okay, well, I, I agree with that. There should be spaces there. Okay, thank you, thank you. Hmm. Those things kind of weird me out when I see all those uh, linting things. Oh, goodness. There's a lot of those, aren't there? Yeah. One way to get better style when you have a, a linter actually complain to you so much. All right. What's wrong with that? Oh, put spaces around in. Okay, well, enough, enough. Don't need to style that perfectly. Okay, so this is what I tried to do before. I think what I was trying to do here was make that navigation bar with a little CSS trickery. And it did not work from what I can remember, but let's try again and see. Actually, now I gotta remember how the heck does that thing even get in there? The source? Oh, wait a minute. It's in within the individual scripts, isn't it? Hold on. It is, yep nav links okay so we 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 feed that here we try tab well, let me see what happens when tab links is used how ugly that look it definitely messed up last time i can't remember how it messed up but, uh, go back and try again all right again see what happens now you see they do show up here but nothing happens when you click it okay so that that's the issue is that it's not getting the href passed through to the tab click okay so obviously there's something I missed in that step so let me see here. We gotta compare what does work and what doesn't work. So what works is... Mm. So... Ideally, what happens in these is that when, let me work wrap it so I can see all my classes here. That when you click a tab, it should kind of like put that little highlighting around it when you click it to know it's active. But this is using a lot of bootstrap kind of stuff to do that, I think. So I'm pretty sure I looked at, um, some raw kind of like uh, CSS or HTML source and I was running an app that had these um, navigation bars. So maybe what I do first is we, we look at an app that had, um, that has like a navigation bar at the top like we've seen in other situations, so. First, let's find an example, shall we? I'm just gonna go to shiny.rstudio.com. We have a handy gallery of both the uh, user-created apps and the demos. The demos are really just kind of like showing a particular concept that you wanna try out. So we just want the nav bar one. This is what I'm going for, is that when this actually renders, um, a nice bar at the very top that will let the user go between these. 
That's that's the goal. Yeah, they've I think they've updated the gallery recently. In fact, let's uh let's check that out, shall we, with the more user the user um versions of apps. So those are right here. Cause I saw some PRs get merged a couple months ago. One by Jesse actually. Let's see. Nice uh, apps around life sciences. I can definitely relate to that. Oh, they did put it here! The fancy racing dashboard is now on the gallery. Nice. That was what uh, Jesse merged, I think, uh, three months ago or whenever it was. So, fun time. Fun time. Okay. Alright. So, let's get the code for this thing. All we want to do here is I want to show that run make an app of this and then I'm gonna use the uh, inspector to um, the inspector to see what happens when those those navigation bars are quick and we're gonna have to look at kind of the source of nav bar page as well I believe and tab panel so we got a little homework to do, but that's what we're here for. So I want to make a new app.r. Back to VS Code. We're just going to save as and throw this in the um, various silly named uh, prototyping directory. All right. I'm gonna get rid of all the cruft here. It's funny, I, I use things like Golem so much that I creating an actual app from scratch. I don't do as much anymore like verbatim scratch. But that's alright. The raw version of this. I know it's small, I'm just copying it over. This is embarrassing. Even I forget what the <laughs> what the syntax is for apps.r. Oh gosh, that's, I'll never hear the end of that. Um Back to the articles. I just gotta look up what they probably just call it the UI function. So I was right, okay, I was on the right track. Paste that in. Yep, yeah, okay. that tab that's a bunch of fluff for my purposes there we go let's get our server component in input output because I'm a creature I have it I'll put session in here Server. And VS Code absolutely mangled the heck out of that copy paste in it. That's alright. And then, when we're done with that, we simply have a call to Shiny App. Okay, that's what we do. Alright, 
So we're going to run this. It won't. It's going to be very boring, but what we're going to do with it is actually inspect it. So I need to open this in an external browser. That should go here. Perfect. Oh, no, thanks for coming, Jeremy. No, no worries. I'm actually... That's really early to drive a kid to school. I I um, get up at 6.30 to do the breakfast and getting lunches ready. And then my wife takes them a little after that. Then I clean up. Then I actually eat my breakfast. And then I feel like it's been three hours already in the day <laughs> when I get there. Okay, so we're going to inspect. Right, making this a little bigger, so then you want to see. Oh, this is not. How do I make this bigger? Maybe not, maybe? Oh, there we go. Okay, I have to select in there. Okay, so the nav bar. I need to. See, okay, so class navbar, navbar default, navbar static. Okay, we have this container. Wait, what? Okay, container fluid right here. Class nav bar header, that's what that is. And we have the LI. So, okay, so. So we should be able to do something like this in HTML or in, in the shiny functions that I did. I think I just need to get the classes in there defined correctly but shiny itself brings in bootstrap automatically so i should be able to just grab all this in but the key will be can i copy relevant parts of this this is the firefox debugger so i have to be a little more careful here i don't care about this i care about all this okay, so if i just Copy that. What the heck is my copy inner HTML? Okay, let's go back to VS Code and see what happens if I put that in something. Did that get everything? Let's see. Well, it didn't get the, the outer stuff. Let me see if I try outer HTML. Let's see if that does any better. There we go. Okay, perfect. So this will be the template we start with. And then we're gonna try recreating this ourselves. Let's keep this We can stop running this now. I have everything I need. And we just want to build this into our app without it looking like it comes from Shiny itself. Now, it sure would be nice if I could just use the nav bar stuff, but the issue is, is that that version of nav bar that Shiny is going to offer is going to not do the right hrefs, I think. Although, you know what? We can try it too and see. We can try it out. Let me first save this snippet before I forget. I'm not going to put it in there. Put it in prototyping. That's a big old name. It's called navbar HTML.
Okay, so let's have that. I'm gonna open it to the right so I can look at this side by side. Perfect. Show me that. Show me that. Show me that. There we are. Oh, that's not the app that I want, is it? I want the uh, uh the real app that are, which is this one. Ah, mess up my opening there. Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna try the brute force way first. We, I got, I think kind of close before, but we're gonna, we're gonna give it a, give it a little uh, pizzazz here. Um, so maybe now, instead of tags did we do tags now. Let me make sure that is a valid, do anything it yeah, sure did okay so now the class word wrap this let's just start moving this over and see this is the kind of stuff I started learning about in David Grangin's uh, outstanding user interfaces with shiny we're kind of building it up uh, from the ground up here, just using Shinies and by proxy HTML tools functions to take what looks like our objects and our functions and translate that into HTML. So the goal is when I actually get this all configured here, when we run it, this tab link should look almost exactly like what we have here, just with the appropriate links that we'll have for the different tabs and the tab names, of course. Now, I'm not sure what role will be here, but we're going to try it anyway. And GitHub Copilot thinks it knows what it is. Um, that's it there. Now we need a div. This one's called Container Fluid. And we need another div. Hey, Isamor, how are you doing? Welcome to our fun, uh, shiny hacking stream here. I'm doing some CSS and HTML stuff right now to make my learning progression shiny app look a lot more better at first pass here. Okay, so that's now far better. Expand. Oh wow, it, GitHub Copilot thinks it knows what I want. Um, we're getting close, we're getting close. Okay, so where are we here? We are in here, we close that navbar header did, so that was here. I feel like it gave me an extra one by accident, let me delete that. Probably missing something, but I don't know what right now. That, that, okay, so now we want to keep it going here. And now we have the UL thing. I'm so scientific with my language. UL thing, okay. Bar, F.
Now, I don't really care what these tab sets are. I guess we'll just make up something random. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, class is that. Oh, we gotta be careful how this is defined here. We have to do this notation for it. Know if this will work or not, we'll find out. Okay, so it thinks it knows what it wants, what I want it to do. Looks like they have a Visible one there? That doesn't make sense. Unordered list, yes, thank you, thank you. That's what UL stands for. This one's a little iffy to me, why there's like nothing in it. I'm gonna try. We want to make it look like what we did up here. Yep. In fact, we can just copy this part. These things, are they part of the, oh, they're all part of the H rep. Oh, okay, okay. This is gonna look a little crazy, I think. Let me just start copying all these. as we go. Whoops, whoops, whoops. That should not go here. That should go here. I have a very sinking feeling this will not work. <laughs> we will see. data value we want this to correspond to what we did up here all that home then, whoops way farther down Okay. Now when it does the, get the tag here, and then we close the LI. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna Why 
by the drop down top. Oh, oh, they had more stuff. Okay, okay. So I just need to repeat this basically. I repeat this for the next one. That should cover it. This is going to be page two. Tab index and all these other ones. Okay, they're both minus one. Oh, that's when I selected it. That's what that was. Oh, but they did tab index of zero there. Maybe I should do zero here. And then this should be true because we're going to use that at first pass okay anything else I need to take care of here I think so so that close there this closes here this should close oh I had extra stuff here right all right I think we whoops 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 I think we matched them up. Okay. Okay, here goes nothing. Uh, we'll see what kind of errors we, we find here, but my goodness. We may have ourselves a winner. Okay. There's a learning, home one, page two, and of course nothing happens when we <laughs> Okay, so it's the same problem as before. How do we get the clicks to respond there? Why do they work here and not in all this fancy stuff? Is this something that can even be done in this framework, or do I have to do something different like jQuery fun? Like we learned about in the in the outstanding shiny UI book. Maybe I should pull that up again. Fresh my memory when I looked at about a month ago or so. Yeah, we're doing nav. Oh, so I basically didn't even follow the best practice earlier. I could have done with tags. Let's see what happens when we do this. Oh, non-standard attributes like data toggle are not correctly processed, but there are solutions. Let's first open this up, shall we?
Wow. Dean opened this issue of about uh, bag ticks, the attributes of uh, characters. Yeah, that's what I've been doing hard coding wise. Yeah, so I have been doing that. Okay, so I have been wrapping in the back ticks. Okay, so that's good to know. Let's go ahead and run that app again, the, the, the bugging one. I want to get that, um, get that HTML out one more time. Sure, I'm getting it the right way. Just gonna click here just to make sure it works. Oh, you know what? I should make my life easier. I don't want that more drop down because the last thing I'm gonna do is have that. Yikes, wrong. Need more shortcuts. All right. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, I don't want this thing. Okay. Try running that again. Okay, that's easier. That's much cleaner. Plot summary. There we go. Let's inspect. Responsive, just in case. Okay, let's copy the outer HTML. Let's go to that fun converter here. Let's see. Let's compare how I did. Did I just type all that in myself correctly or did I mess something up? So let's go back here. Div, those are exported out, as I said. Um, and they just, as I said in the issue, they just forgot to do the back ticks. is is that now I want to replace those hrefs with this other one will be this.
I don't really care about the names as long as it works. So let's see about this. We're going to comment this one out. See if this does any better than the last one did. What messed up? Oh, the UIs, UI ULs are not found. That means I need to take the advice of what David said earlier. Just put them in like this. Alright. See, but I have an error somewhere, don't I? Because I need an extra parentheses. Okay. Yep. Alright. Nope. Still nothing. Still nothing. So it wasn't the coding problem per se. There must be something I'm missing with how these nav bars work. Like, how does Shiny know, or Bootstrap know, that when that tab is clicked to go to that different reference? Well, if we look at the prototyping app, when you have a tab panel, You have the content inside. What we should do here, let's look at the HTML this produces. From Shiny itself. That would be right here. Last tab pane, title plot, data value plot. The rest of it's just the inside stuff. That does not matter as much. Let's see what happens when we just run this thing here. That's basically what I typed in, isn't it? But the, um, it's that tab set ID that worries me and the data toggle stuff. Perhaps this, this is just something that only works when you have the um, server side stuff along with it. But there shouldn't be any JavaScript needed for this. And I know some other packages in the Shiny ecosystem let you do these links at the top of a page and then you can do an, a, a hyperlink to somewhere else. Like not in the app, but like a totally external site. That's kind of like what I want this to be like. But it's just not happening. So I wonder if I'm stuck with doing the. Um, my mouse went away. 
I'm stuck with doing the unstylish way, but if I can if I can style this in such a way that instead of looking like the little list items, it looks like a bar at the top, then then I'll be in decent shape if it doesn't have to be like the bootstrap stuff. So more googling. This may be what I want. Yep. <laughs> Style and, and make us the navigation bar from pure CSS. So in these standard HTML is the base. I've got that covered for sure. Let me remove the bullets. Is that really it? Oh yeah, that that's Okay, removes list style type none. Set margin. Oh, but that doesn't give me a bar out of it. What is that about? Horizontal navigation bar. Yep, here we are. Okay, filing example. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Not as interested in that theory right now, but basically. Okay, so basically what they do is they use CSS to override the UL um, and the LI items with their own style, which is basically what I want to do. I just want to override the style, make it a little more cleaner. Now, I don't want to apply this to all of the shiny apps UI and UL LI items. I only want to apply it to this bar at the top, which I think means I need to wrap in another div and in the CSS wrap, make sure that div is the one that applies it, which I believe is covered in the book that we are looking at. CSS, let's try it. That's the selectors. So I want to wrap. Style unique elements. ID. So it, yeah, the class equal first P. Okay, okay. So we're going to make a, a pseudo class and then we're, or not pseudo, but a normal uh, div that wraps that stuff. And then we're going to style that as part of the selector. I'm making no sense, but you know, I think I, I think I might know what I have to do here. I'm going to change this slightly. We're going to do the tag list trick. adding 
more to this, so I'm gonna put this. that and now we're going to move all this stuff in there Copy paste destroyed again all right I the wrong key again right. okay now we got the, the class here. Um, let me check something real quick. Make sure things are working well. Okay. Um, then we'll start making a CSS out of this. Let's first make sure that, you know what, I this one over the way over engineer that part I'm just gonna get rid of it because apparently that is not in my expertise yet of how to do the nav bar stuff like the way bootstrap does so we're just gonna take the easy way out and style it ourselves here okay so we need to add a we need a new CSS file I believe Us. So this is creation that success. Let's look at that example from before. This one. Let's clean up the pad in here. messed up I don't want four I want two I gotta change that in VS code I keep forgetting Before we do the selector stuff, I am just going to apply this across the whole app just to get a feel for it. So let's review in the book how to inject CSS properly into your app. Point to an external file. That's what we want to do. We should do a CSS dependency. Okay. Well, oh, we're doing tiny CSS modifications. So maybe we don't go that level yet. We just go ahead and do this in the level here. Now, 
that's going to be part of page one and page two. Which are over here. W folder in here. Move that there. page two. Let's see if that at least did the trick with the um, main app here. Okay, moment of truth. Does it actually do anything? Oh, you're kidding. Oh, wait, no, 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 don't, don't worry, Eric, don't worry. We have the wrong one. <laughs> Should be. It's nav links. We, we call it nav links now. Let's get that out of here. Two needs that as well. Oh yeah, yeah. So Isomar, you're referring to what we had discussed in the latest R Weekly Highlights podcast. We saw, uh, yeah, uh, Mad Dre's blog on, on Rostrum has a whole bunch of fun stuff, and that story was about clicking using the locator function in Base R to look at an image plotted an R of a map, clicking on that to get the XY coordinates and do some real fun and fancy uh, things with that information. So that was a that was a fun story to cover. Me and Mike had had a lot of fun with that. So I'm glad you glad you enjoyed it too. That was I bet that that episode is a lot more fun than what I'm doing right now. I can pretty much guarantee it. <laughs> but I'm just trying to get the easy stuff done first. Not easy for me per se, but get this part done so I can move on with the real fancy thing. Yes, we have it. We have it. I think so. Let me pop it out and verify. Wait, what app am I running here? Hold on. I'm running the wrong app. Not, not done yet. Oh, I'm so silly. Okay. I did this in the prototyping folder. I want that. My file's open. I just close it all. Close it all so that I have my clean slate back. Okay, this is interesting. I did not get the style. Oh, jeez, I just closed the VS Code. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Let's get that back. Well, remember my folder. No, it didn't. Okay. business yeah let's do that 
Okay. So. Question is where to inject that CSS. Let's try that again just in case. Make sure page one, act, I did actually save that there, didn't I? Oh, because this folder, the href may be wrong. I'll clean this up later, but it's probably going in the subdirectory instead of the um, main root of the app. I'll probably have to clean this up in a little bit, but let's see if that does it. Nope. So it's not finding the CSS yet. So the problem is we got a CSS file in the main directory, but the the actual page one and well, it's just sourcing it though. Hmm. Let me try putting that back. We'll inspect the app too to see if there's any crazy stuff. Yeah, that's probably it. I, I This is not in the head of the app, isn't it? So we should put this somewhere else. That's a good call. I was being too greedy here. So, let us go back to our fancy book, but also let's look at the article about CSS in here, because they have examples where um, they include it in the head of the app. Oops. There are different mechanisms of where to put it. Yeah, the tags had, okay. Yep, yeah, it may be just as simple as throwing it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. It shouldn't, this shouldn't be very hard. This should be... Now, the reason this was different is it's here. This page function from brochure is kind of like the fluid page those those functions so it should go here i think but what we should do is we should look at the help of this to make sure that we're going about this the right way ui okay so ui is we should Try putting it here. Then we throw that in here. Yes, VS Code. I know I have an empty line. Okay. And we will do the same thing. Let's 
move that over. I don't know why I did the file thing in there, but the here package, but that's okay. Alright. Blah. Let me try opening an external browser. Is it still? Yeah, it's still. Well, let's inspect it to see if it actually did get it or not. Now, I don't know, I don't think that Dark Reader thing is messing it up. Shouldn't be anyway, but you can tell it's definitely not getting the CSS. Alright. Just gotta make sure I didn't miss a step here of how to construct this. Yeah, I may try that again. Um, or should it be? No, it shouldn't be in here. This is just a, a wrapper on top. What does the wrap argument mean? Oh. So, they have a wrap function. A UI function wrapping the brochure UI. So... That default is shiny fluid page. So that is the fluid page. Which probably means the core brochure app. Let's open the help file for that. Happened that not? Oh, wrong. wrong character. This says the dot dot dots are a list of page, but what if first let me see if it works when you do it in the tag list, that's step one. Always hit the wrong key for that. Let's see if this actually works, and if like, it won't, it won't fix the problem. But I just want to make sure the tag list stuff is still no. No, no, it will not. Okay, so scratch that. So I some more, we're gonna take your advice, we're gonna search for WW in here somewhere. Or I know I should search for the CSS file name. Okay, it's trying to. It's trying to, but it, but it did it in the wrong spot. It did it in the bot. Oh, maybe because I, did I forget to take it out of the other spots? No, I did take it. Yeah, it's out of here. So it's not in there. It was in the. 
Tap.r. <laughs> yeah, I put it in here. But it may be... Wait a minute. I didn't do it in the tag's head, did I? Oh, jeez. That, that may have been the problem. But sometimes the, go, the co pilot gets a little finicky with what it thinks I'm trying to do. Ah, too much text. Yeah, voting order death only matters. I've had that happen in other situations, but I'm still pretty new to this web dev world of hacking around in Shiny without using the native functions, so I tend to have mishaps when I try something different. I'll put some comma there. Let's see. Inspect it again. Search it again. We're in the head area. Take a look at the actual link object and see if there's CSS that's overriding it. Yep, let's do that. So... Now what do we do for that CSS one? the UL or LI items. The LIA, that's, yeah, let's see. This should override it, like those being applied. But I don't think it is. Now, just the uh, Throw out something. I'm gonna disable the dark reader. No, no effect. Okay, that's not a problem. Hmm. Okay, so how do we get the CSS applied here? First thing we're going to try is we need to rule out if even inline CSS doesn't work with this in this approach. If we can rule that out, then we know it's a, probably a file problem. So let's 
go back. And what we will do is let me look at my mini apps here. Yeah, so that has an H1 header. I want to do an inline CSS back in the app file. Even though that's not the best practice, I want to rule out if it's an issue with that. something really massive just to make sure it works. Oh yeah, that worked. <laughs> Huge, huge. Let's make that a little smaller, but that, that proved it out, I think. All right. Yep. And then when we go to page two, it's normal. So, okay. So the problem is not in the way where we're doing it. I mean, where in terms of location that we're doing it, it's how we're doing it. So it definitely does not... I thought it was in the same working directory as where the app is being called. Remember, there was some advice in David's book about including this. I think it's time I start to look at that again. The best way in Shiny about HTML on dependencies is to create a dependency and attach it to a tag. But it's going to have the same problem it's going to have this potential gap in the file location. I guess I could just try putting it in the root of the repo too and see. Although I'm curious about one thing here. I know Shiny in previous things I've done, Shiny acts like the WWW is a special area and it'll automatically grab that. 
So I'm just curious if this actually is going to solve it here. No, no, okay. That was a shot in the dark. Okay. CSS file, making sure it's legitimate. Is my syntax bad? I could try the H2 H1 thing like I did in the upper place just to make sure it's not anything else. heading didn't change either so it's definitely not finding the file that that's definitely it let's let's open up the inspector seem like anything. <laughs> see if this thing shows up here somewhere. Zero rules. Yep, not found. Okay, well there you go. <laughs> Definitely not found. Why not? Why not? Itself, see if I can trick it somehow. No. Hmm. How do I get it in here? And I could resort to the inline stuff, but it violates all those best practices that I've been reading about. There should be a way to get this in somehow.
Oh, wouldn't that be something? Oh, I wouldn't. Um. Well, we will, uh. Copy it verbatim. Copy. I think that was the same spelling, but you know, it never hurts to be sure. Be too careful. Alright, try it again. Yeah. Now, the only thing I don't know is that when it's doing these um, mini apps within the main app, if the heads of those don't translate back up to the other parts of the UI. But then again, we did prove out that when we did the inline, it definitely got in there. So, we're in the right spot. Now, I know like you said, isomore order definitely matters when loading things. So, just have to find the right order, I guess. And this, I don't know if this will do anything, but I'm just going to take out that wrapping div just in case. No, that wasn't the problem. Okay. This isn't even a golden map. This is just a, a and for all intents and purposes, a normal shiny app. So there's got to be some tricks around this. Let's see. CSS. What does that function do? try anything now. Um, but, oh, okay, so it's probably just a wrapper around this. Take a look at that post again. Yeah, I guess that's just a wrap around it. This should give me the HTML back, even though I don't have this file. I just want to see what it, what it does. Oh, it actually does need the file. Okay, let's... Okay, the 
this might be what we want. It evaluates it and it makes it like it's in line, it looks like. So, what this means, let's see if my hypothesis works here. In here, we will do right in the first page app and see if that does it. Aaron Fun, our game is not a character up there. Okay, well, it doesn't like where I put it. Oh, okay, maybe because. It's. It should be without the HTML tag. Okay, so obviously I've got a lot of crazy stuff here. I need to. in the Metroid. Metroid's one of my favorite games of all. Yeah. Alright. Let's see. All right. Got that. Now we will try that approach here. It's the little things sometimes. The little things that add up. I will learn from this. I guarantee it. <laughs> Top of this whole thing here. Scary, scary. Should go here. And then, my goodness, you see how VS Code just mangled that copy paste. Alright, here we go. Okay, let's open this up. Have it. Well, now that's interesting. All right, must have copy pasted it wrong, but we're 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 darn close now. Here, darn close. Okay. What did I just hit there? Ah, give me back to where I want. Okay. Let's look, let's look. I, Whenever I zoom in, I tend to lose my wit about me when I see the... Oh, I should show you all the trick I did before. And the trick I do in VS Code is I can split the file twice. So I'll look at the first section and look at the second section. It's page one, let's go to page two. Anything different here? No, there's nothing really different. That seemed awfully odd. Okay, let's run it again. Maybe it was just an anomaly. Oh, okay. What what did I do wrong before? Hold on, let me open up in the external. Oh, it's there. It is there. We have it. 
about an hour and a half just for a navigation bar. Oh goodness, but this will this will be very helpful for the main the main app here. Okay. Okay. So Pretty happy with that, even though it was kind of a little trickery at the end. We at least have that. Let's commit that. Got a lot of commits to make here. Oh, I gotta edit this Docker file, don't I? We need a markdown package here, which is bizarre why it wasn't installed the right the first time. There we go. Let's get these commits out of the way for the dev environment. changes here oh it's just this stuff we can revert oh, just... that Good shape there. And okay, now we know it's working. I don't need that, um, that H1 thing. I'll take care of the uh, div stuff for wrapping that another time. I just had to make sure it worked in this prototype first. Right. That actually works. All right. Took a long time to get there, but we got there. that oh. okay now let's have some fun let's have some fun with a few minutes I'll spend time here I want to look at that other package that I referenced way at the top um, it's this one right here I don't know if this is French or not but truly true I don't know but obviously David is brilliant um i've talked with him many times um the goal of this package is to provide a nice gooey interface to the golem package so we are gonna literally try this out just to see how it goes but we'll take a look and see what this um what this does okay so it's a minimalist view because it's meant to be used as an RStudio add-in and David is actually using his shiny mobile package um, to wrap it in a nice, um, you know, condensed UI. So let's take a look at what this offers. So at the time he has three options, but apparently in the GitHub repo, he mentions that only the package one is working but let's let's give it a shot yeah I don't yep so that's not doing anything the package one will okay so
Oh, cool. Even when you hover over it, you get a tooltip. Not for all of them, but let's do Golem for this. Oh, Reactor. Wow. Okay. I'm curious what this does. Oh, so this moves around. Okay, so you can move from the home to the configuration. Package path. This is a path in your directory structure, I believe. Metadata, we can edit the description. Nice. Oh, this is really cool. Love it. Just leave that. Just edit one thing just to see how it does it. Um, Yeah, so what, what these are is that these are flags for various functions and calls that are in the dev script of Golem. He just does some nice toggles for them. Really cool. I'm gonna uncheck a few of them just to see what happens. Dependencies. Yep, these are all front ends to Yep, okay, CSS template. Alright, let's see. Customize Golem hooks. That's a new feature in Golem recently. Okay, template. Golem default. Shiny mobile with simple or tabs or split or vs for whoa wow look at all this shiny dashboard shiny fluent my goodness okay so now imagine now i haven't talked to david about this this is all literally just me exploring here if we had another option here where it was with this called learning app. He needs a brochure one, exactly. You knew where I was going with this. I think that's the ticket. A, I've always wanted to contribute back to their project in one way, shape, or form, because David's packages, Colin's packages for that matter, literally make my job even more possible with the cool things I've developed lately. It's about time I have not only do my contribution on my voice, but do contribution with code too. So I feel like if I can get this learning project done, then it could be a simple toggle here to bootstrap it all. Now for this, let's just select um, Golem default as it is here. Look at the output. Okay, so, okay, so I see what this is meant to do is that it gives you the R code to create the app the way that you've selected in those UI widgets. Okay, okay. Now, I'm kind of curious what that looks like when we um, go back and change a different framework. Maybe we do just Shiny Dashboard. What does that do? That's oh, <laughs> the shiny dashboard package is required. Of course, it would be okay. Well, at least it has a nice uh, error message that appears. Okay, well, we can we can take care of that. I'm just experimenting now, anyway. that in there all right Try again. package 
call them. Yep. Not slash. Let's keep that blank for now. So I think what this will do is just going to change the UI scaffolding in front. I see. Okay, did you see this? Okay, this is something I need to pay attention to. Is that it has template files in the package itself, the Trulé package? Um, yes, actually, I know about the multi-core option. I used to use the heck out of that in our HPC environment at work um, to speed up package installations. Um, Mostly worked well, we just had to be a little careful depending on how many cores you specified. Um, but okay, so I see that we copy system files. Start running this. Oh. Yeah, there's apparently some air checking that needs to happen. This is definitely not a finished package yet. Um, let's try that one more time. something to see. Oh, it did try to create stuff. Okay. That was good air checking. Get the read me. I'm going to uncheck all this other stuff. That tells me I've been streaming too long. My overhead light just went out. <laughs> oh, we're going in the pack again, huh? Well, you know, I gave it a good try, but at work, it, it ain't it ain't happening. Um, not gonna leave that running a little bit. Get that shiny dashboard one going if it's the last thing I do kind of thing. Alright, let's try it now. Oh, come on now, what? Dev tools? Oh, <laughs> oh goodness. Alright. Okay, binaries are fast. I love it. All right. Dang it, I'm going to get this working one way or another. All right. Hold on. Oh, I already says I was going to do three and not two. There we go. Not gonna change that. We are gonna just uncheck all this stuff. I think we can keep the other stuff like this. Let's go the shiny dashboard. Alright, try again. Package successfully created. Okay, let's see what it looks like.
All right. Where are my files? Did I do wrong? There we are. Okay. Oh, type example three. Well, look at that. They're all there. Everything is there for that app. App config, app UI, dashboard. Yep. Yep. This is slick. Okay. So what I what I will do is I will invest more time in, in learning how that works so that I can um, see if my learning project can be a part of this in the future. And of course, I'm saying all this. I haven't talked to David at all about it. Um, but like I said, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta try out some stuff to contribute back. Okay, so I had two very small goals tonight. First was getting that navigation bar in the template learning app. We got that after a lot of um, silly troubleshooting and me trying to do too much with um, the bootstrap version of it. Then I wanted to explore the Trulé package and be able to see if this is something I should invest some time in to uh, use for bootstrapping applications in the future, especially ones like this one that will be like a, um, a good, quick, gooey way to launch this uh, learning application. So I dare say we got it. Now I'm going to test something out real quick because I'm that light not working is freaking me out. So I will be right back and we'll see if that scene works. I'm back. Well, thanks Unicorn Coder for that awesome uh, graphic there. I've been wanting to use that for a while. It just took me a long time to put that into OBS. So, like I said, we had a um, very small goals tonight. I think we accomplished them. The next steps for this thing are to make sure that I've been hard coding this example app, and now we know the CSS stuff to deal with, and we know that the general structure should work. I want to make backend functions to basically help the user take their first app, however it's formed, like that module we have for page one, take that and then copy that over to a new one and they can build upon it. And then likewise, they can do it again for the next whatever step they have. And at that point, that's really about all it has to do. So I'm thinking that might actually, that might be good enough for an MVP, as they say. So we'll see if I do this uh, again tomorrow. Always is a roll of the dice, depending on how things go at infamous day job and, um, and the kids' uh, schedules. But... As always, uh, thank you so much for sticking around. It wasn't really Docker debugging tonight. It was more me still being a complete novice with doing custom HTML stuff. But I will learn eventually. So you can always uh, find me on the streamer's Discord. I think a lot of you are a part of that, whoever's been sticking around until now. And I will be talking to you all at some point later. Uh, definitely give shout outs to all the rest of our fun streamers out there. And if you haven't listened yet, yeah, give a listen to the latest R Weekly highlights. Um, no matter if you're running or cooking or doing whatever else, we try to make it fun. And definitely thanks. I tell them this after each episode. A huge thanks to Mike Ketchbrook for joining me on that effort. He is brilliant guy and so nice to do a podcast with someone else it's <laughs> sometimes doing a solo stuff could be a little tricky but anyway 
Enough of me rambling. I'm going to get some sleep. I actually got something working tonight, so I'm always thrilled about that. And I will virtually see you all later. So, bye for now.